Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. I'd like to talk about tinnitus today, or some people call it tinnitus. I always call it tinnitus, but it's that constant ringing in your ears. Check out all my books on audible.com. I think the only way to approach this is really through exercises. I don't know of any particular nutrient um, that could help with, uh, with tinnitus or tinnitus, however you want to pronounce it. But what it is is really, uh, it comes from maybe pressure in here, um, in your sinuses and these tubes in here. Um, it maybe comes from earwax build up in your ear. Then you have your ears cleaned out. And that would help a lot. And it, but it's also maybe the hairs inside the ear. You know, there's little hairs in there, as you know. And those get old. I think you're, as you get older, you can't hear anymore because those little hairs connect uh, to the brain. And, um, you know, that's how you hear things. So over the years, if those hairs in there get really, really old, and, uh, and you, as you start getting old, but they start getting worn out, or maybe they're just covered up with, uh, you know, earwax and all this kind of stuff, um, which really is there's no earwax. You just don't have a clean air, and it turns into something waxy. you got to clean your ears out. And there's ways to do that. I won't go into that right now, but um, there's a connection going on. And when your brain can't hear... Uh, anything anymore, it starts sending out singles um, that go into the higher frequencies. And so it gets higher and higher and higher. And that's that ringing that you hear in inside the ear there. The goal here is to get some increased circulation going and then hopefully some more nutrition, you know, because maybe those hairs are damaged. And once they get damaged, let me tell you, really hard to repair. But we want to relieve the pressure and get some circulation going. That's the main point. So the purpose of all this is to stimulate circulation in the inner ear, get some nutrients uh, brought into there with more, you know, blood flow coming into the inner ear, and then establish, you know, help create this frequency between the inner ear and the auditory cortex in the brain. And, you know, once that is established, the ringing will go down and you'll be able to hear a little bit better. There's certain things you can do to kind of relieve that pressure inside the inner ear. One of them is you can grab your earlobes here and tug down on them. And you can do tug down like just like that or tug out, you know, down and out. And um, you can do that about 25 times, okay? And um, what you're doing there is you're kind of relieving that pressure. That's what's built up in there is, is a lot of pressure. And again, it could be coming in here. You could massage this in here, or you could just pull this out. The other way you can do is kind of let go of the ears as you're doing it. So you have one, to and you know just do that up to you know anywhere 20 25 times it's pulling them out and doing this and if you hear a popping in there now you're beginning to relieve the pressure you can also just massage the earlobes as you pull them out massage it and massage it that's another thing kind of relax that area again trying to clear the eustachian tubes uh, another thing you can do is kind of take the ears and push them all the way across and out like this and kind of relieve it um, and you could do that maybe 10 times and again that's changing that air pressure in case you've got you know sort of sort of pressure built up in there another thing you can try while you're doing that you've got a good press you know don't push too hard but you've got a good kind of close the ears and then try opening the mouth that will help clear those tubes, that is station tubes, because that's where a lot of the blockages can ha happen. And you've got a blockage there, or uh, maybe you've just got, you know, you gotta do some massage for it. It's just gotta open up. Once it does, that ringing should, over time, should start dissipating. Another thing you can do is take your thumbs, put them inside the canal, so they're nice and snug, and just start pulling those out. Again, you should hear a popping with that. That will, you know, help relieve the pressure, but just do that again you know, another 15, 20, 25 times. You could try it a few times a day, but that'll also help relieve that pressure. And the other thing you can do is take them, just make sure you get a good seal and then work it around like that and do that about 25, 20, 25 times in one direction and then go in the other direction. So 25 times in this direction, 25 times in that direction. And that'll begin to relieve that pressure in the ears um, this is something you, these are exercises you need to do. You can massage this area in here, um, you know, in case you've got some sinus um, going on in here. Again, this all connects and connects to the ear and then you've got that, you know, the hammer and the anvil and all that stuff going on in there. Um, I've talked about this before. When you get vertigo, um, a lot of times that's just a muscle that's pulled down 
um, on the inner ear. And that's another thing I recommend is just massaging this, the neck coming down in here from the ears all the way down in here when you do. And again, when you do this in here, this shouldn't hurt. Like if you touch this in here, it really, really hurts a lot. There's a problem. I mean, there's a knotted muscle. So you got to just kind of feel around. I don't feel anything. Nothing hurts very much or anything like that. You get back here, you're going, oh, that hurts a little bit. Now you can see that's more tightened up and it's muscle. So you can kind of massage in here. Certainly isn't going to hurt. Um, and, you know, you just got to, we got to get to do these exercises every single day to, uh, to really address this problem. So it's not going to just happen the first time and it could, um, but it usually takes like a week or two weeks and maybe even longer, but just keep doing these same exercises, pulling them out like this and pulling down, pulling out, don't release and then pulling them or letting them release and letting them release and then taking the hands and massaging back and forth. And again, what you're doing, you're trying to change that air pressure that's built up in there. And what you can do with cleaning the ear, uh, you just get yourself some warm water. You can get a, a syringe or something of really, really, really nice warm water. It doesn't have to be hot, but you want to get it in there and kind of spray it up and let it drain out. They've got things you can buy at, uh, at Walgreens and use. You fill them up and you spray the water and they're, they're very effective. Another thing is, um, you know, an ear candle. I've never seen one of those, but that's where you have the candle out here. What you're doing there again, um, this could work really work well for uh, tinnitus because um, you're relieving the pressure so and you're changing the pressure and so it's drawing out all that, that ear wax. Um, I had a friend of mine who got so much ear wax in his ear, one of his ears, he couldn't hear it at all from this ear. He thought he'd gone deaf and he went to see the doctor and it was just earwax. You just need to be clean. Once I heard that story, I just really started taking care of my ears really well and making sure they're clean all the time. You'd want to uh, keep the ears clean, massage in here, do those exercises. The other one I said, pull out like this, get a good suction on the head and just pull out. You could do that 10. You can do it as much as 25 times. You could do it a few times a day. And if you hear that ringing and it's really intense, keep doing these exercises like this. Um, you know, there could be something else going on in there. You know, this is what I would do. I would do it every day. You could do it a few times a day, but you really got to be consistent with it. You do it day in and day out and make sure you, you uh, practice these exercises and you'll see improvement over time with tinnitus or tinnitus of the ear. So the mineral tin actually feeds the ear. Um, you'll find that in my full spectrum mineral blend. And then there's something having a tin ear that actually means you're tone deaf. You can't appreciate music. You can't hear uh, the good from the bad. You have a tin ear. And then there's tinnitus, which is totally unrelated. And tinnitus comes from ringing. So you hear this ringing in your ear. So there's absolutely no connection between the three uh, tin for the ear, having a tin ear and having tinnitus. But as Ernest Hemingway said, isn't pretty to think so. Dr. Bob, I'll see you next time. We've got four of my books now on Audible. The temple he was referring to was his body. Uh, it's a, honoring your temple through natural health. My best book so far is The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. That's my most comprehensive book. I wrote that one last year. Silver, The Miracle Mineral, The End of Infectious Disease. Um, how I Got Meningitis, that's on Audible. My biggest seller for sure, The Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water, The Definitive Guide to the World's Healthiest Substance. I have sold thousands and thousands of those for years.